Previously in the car, Sebastian Loeb is the new rally boss. I'm driving without any problems, without making any mistakes in my own proper rhythm. I was really expecting the four-wheel drive to be in front, and I was surprised at the finish that it was us who were ahead. He's a nine-time world champion. We know that he's the best rally driver, so it's almost logical that he's in front. Better hands, although he's still in contention and pushing to catch his new teammate. And he managed to avoid the traps of the day, unlike Nani Roma. When you lose 40 minutes, you lose any chance of winning. Nasser Alatir, in his mini, is well in this fight, but under ever-increasing pressure. So it's look now the Bijot really uh, going uh, very well, you know. But okay, most of the 4x4 uh, get stuck. <laughs> All the attention at the start of the special was on Sebastian Loeb, winner of his first Dakar stage yesterday, quite rightly so. And he had the rivals, especially Giniel de Villiers, looking rather worried. But I'm uh, surprised by the, the speed of the Peugeot, um, especially in a stage like yesterday in a, in, a, in a WRC type stage, they were really very quick. Um, you know, normally we should, uh, we should be able to pull five or eight minutes in a stage like that to have an advantage because we know they are very quick in the open desert, but for sure they, uh, they did a lot of homework in the last year and they, their car is very quick. Leb and the Peugeot team are looking very impressive. Stefan Batterhansel, second overall, also had a smile on his face. I have the impression that in terms of material, the level is more balanced concerning the top three teams. Then you have the drivers with more or less talent, but the cars are at the same level, and that makes the race very open. Now, with Loeb taking off first and having to deal with the navigation, the question was, would he be able to beat his rivals once again? It will be another wet day for the Dakar heroes, more mud and even heavy thunderstorms on the Tucumán province. Whilst all the attention is on his new teammate Sebastian Loeb, former five-time bike winner Cyril Desprez continues his apprenticeship in a car. The Frenchman was 10th on the day, and he's now 9th overall. After several years in a mini, Vladimir Vasilyev is now in a Hilux. He was clearly enjoying his new car. Third yesterday, fortunately he was only 11th today. After losing 40 minutes in the mud yesterday, Nani Roma was hoping to hit back, but taking off 18th on narrow roads made his task pretty hard, and he lost six extra minutes. Leroy Puta had a great day on the wet tracks of Argentina. The multiple South African off-road champion made the best of his Hilux, capturing a great seven spot, three minutes adrift. While Stefan Petterhansel knows that the Dakar won't be won today, he's not really a specialist on these WRC-type paths. The 11-time winner of the rally still lost more time today, almost three minutes on the day's winner. Yesterday, Miko Hivenen was surprised by the pace of his rivals. On tracks made for his style and car, the former WRC driver continued his learning experience and got a fine fifth place. Calm and solid, that's how Giniel de Villiers got his first Dakar crown in 2009. So far, he's doing that again, despite this slight slide. And today, despite a slow puncture at the end of the special, he got a good fourth spot and moved up to second overall. This stage should have suited title holder Nasser Alatir, but there wasn't much he could do against the Peugeot strongmen. He had to settle for third spot. This was not really taking a lot of risk, you know. Okay, uh, Sebastian, he made a really good uh, time and uh, he opened the road. But okay, uh, we try to do our best, you know, to continue in this space.
After a nasty fright with his engine yesterday, Carlos Sainz was on fine form today. He was second, losing just over one minute. But that's nothing at this stage in the Dakar. But like yesterday, it was to this man, Sebastian Loeb, who was flying. The Dakar newcomer was impressive, untouchable perhaps. Despite taking off first, he clocked the best times at all the checkpoints and eventually got a second consecutive stage win. The last man to have done so in his maiden year was Kenyan Shekhar Mehta, and that was back in 1987. Only he has won three in a row. That's Lerb's next task. It was a great special for us. We were a lot more confident than yesterday in the car. We pushed from the start to the finish. I was at my maximum all the time. I was confident and the car was great. Daniel Elena did a great job with no hesitation in the notes. We managed an almost perfect special. And with that, he came in 1 minute and 23 seconds ahead despite the short and special stage. How much could it have been if we rode the full course today? Alatia third, de Villiers in fourth. In the overall, Loeb leads by five minutes. That's quite a healthy lead heading in to tomorrow's marathon stage for the cars. is an extreme championship in the world of motorsport. Ari Vatanen and Newhark Hankinen, the Flying Finns, were the first WRC drivers to race on the Dakar. Colin McRae raced in 2004 and 2005, while Carlos Sainz is the most successful of the last decade, winning the Dakar in 2010 with Volkswagen. In 2016, four WRC drivers at the start of the Dakar. Sebastian Loeb, Mikko Hervinen, Martin Prokop, and of course, Carlos Sainz. The World Rally Championship is a good base to start racing, but the drivers can find it difficult to adapt to the Dakar. It's not easy, you know, I have to take some time to get used to it. Very, very fast section and you could go six gear for many kilometers, but there's some crests all the time and, and they, are, they are straight. But when you don't know that and you slow down a little bit, you get frustrated a bit and like I've slowed down for that one as well. But uh, it's, it's the same for everybody, just have to remember that and, and stay cool. For me, the biggest problem is the navigation. The driving the car is just more heavier. It has not so much power, but it's just just the car. The rest is new for me, and I, I have to try as fast as possible how to how to use it. The nine-time World Rally Champion Sebastian Loeb is dealing with the same kind of difficulties as his colleagues, doing it very well. So I still don't want. It's true that it's very long in the stage, it's not the same story, we're in it for quite a while. We're not on the edge as often we are in WRC. Anyway, it's very demanding on concentration, you need to look far ahead to see if the turns are opening or closing. You try to see the road to keep some momentum in the turns, it's just not easy. It may be difficult, but as of today, Sebastian Loeb has won two stages of the Dakar. You call that some pretty fast adaptation. His technique is much better than ours in these kinds of conditions. It was a WRC stage for 400 Ks. It's quite logical he's in the lead. I know it. I know if somebody is thinking opposite that it's not, it's not right. He's the best driver in the world and uh, he was nine time uh, world rally champion. So he has to be like that. Today's stage in the trucks was the shortest of the day after being neutralised at checkpoint 3 due to the heavy rain that struck the course, making things very treacherous for the big beasties. We're at checkpoint 3 and we just received a call from the race headquarters telling us that the truck special was stopped. So now we're going to give them a new liaison course to get to the bivouac. There was some racing that happened, however, but it wasn't great for Kamaz. Our at Mardi Eve was 33rd today, losing 26 minutes. But remember, the Kamaz weren't great here last year. But it's not a great birthday present for team boss Vladimir Chogin. Fourth today was Peter Verschluss in his MAN, who's back after his year off from racing. He was beaten by former carman Federico Villagra in his Ivoco, with the tight stages suiting both the Argentinian and his machine. He now sits third overall. And Stacey seems to be reveling in his new truck. 
The MAN is suiting him nicely so far, so much so that he leads the race after three days and two stages. He lost out on the stage win today, but will be happy to head into the marathon with the overall in his hands. The fastest man today on the reduced course was Martin Colomy, 17 seconds faster than Stacey, but he's only making small dents in the overall. The 10 minutes he lost on stage two have hindered his standing in the overall. Remember, the trucks didn't race the prologue, so they're barely getting into their stride. And with the weather bearing down, the race drew to a halt. The trucks are waiting to make their way back to the bivouac to prepare for tomorrow's marathon. Brian Berg Winneth, I'm at the start of the second stage, uh, ready for a nice day in the mountains, and uh, yeah, gonna have some fun. Okay. It's early in the race, but with two marathon stages this year, the first day without service needs to be. Tomorrow, the hardest part begins. We loop around and discover the beauty and treacherous nature of Pohoi. 